Italian Pie is proud to support WYES and this episode of Wall Street Wrap-Up and to promote the importance of financial literacy and education. This week on Wall Street Wrap-Up, the stock market ended down because January's consumer price index numbers were higher than expected. Two Federal Reserve Board members say they're open to a possible 50 basis point increase because of the hotter CPI numbers for the next FOMC meeting, which spooked the markets to sell off. And Tesla is recalling over 360,000 vehicle, electric vehicles, saying there's a problem with the full self-driving vehicle software. Now, would you actually want to take your hand off the wheel of a car you're driving? I'm Andre Laborde. We've got these stories and more. It's Friday. That means it's time for Wall Street Wrap-Up. Hi, I'm Andre Laborde. Welcome to Wall Street Wrap-Up on this Friday, February 17th, 2023. Well, this week, inflation numbers for January were released by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Inflation is coming down due to higher interest rates, but with food and energy costs higher, how is this affecting local food businesses? Well, we'll be talking later this evening with Alfred Lanassa. Alfred is the vice president of restaurant operations at William B. Riley Company, and he's manager of Louisiana Caf Louisiane Cafe in New Orleans. We'll find out how inflation, supply chain issues, and employment shortages have hit his business and restaurants alike. That's Alfred Lanassa coming up. Well, the stock market ended lower for the week with hotter-than-expected CPI numbers released. Top sectors for the week were discretionary, utilities, and staples. Sector laggards this week were energy, real estate, and materials. The NASDAQ was the only index with a gain for the week. And the Dow Jones closed today at 33,826, which was down three-tenths of a point for the week. The S&P 500, they closed today at 4,079, which was also down three-tenths of a point for the week. And the NASDAQ, they closed today at 11,787, and that was up six-tenths six of a point for the week. Inflation for January came in hotter than expected or hoped for with the releasing of the Consumer Price Index. Well, the market was hoping that due to rising interest rates, that number would be lower. But for the month of January, inflation was at four-tenths of a point for the month over month, and it was at 6.4 percent for all of last year. Core CPI, which is excluding food and energy, which economists feel are a better gauge of discretionary items, since we all need food and energy to live with, that was up four-tenths of a percent for the month, and it was just over up five-and-a-half percent for the year. And last month, energy was up two percent, and food, well, that increased one-half of one percent. But the good news is that airline fares and used cars were both down. For January, eggs are now at over 70% year over year. Bread is up almost 15%. Coffee is up just over 12.5%. Butter is also up 26% from January of last year. Energy, if for January, showed an increase year over year. For fuel oil, is now up over 27%. Gasoline has come down, now just about 1.5% from one year ago. And electricity is up almost 12%. Now, those in the Northeast trying to heat their homes during a cold winter, well, they're seeing a 26% increase in natural gas. Well, mortgage rates have picked up again this week with the cost of purchasing a 30-year fixed rate now at 6.7% for 30 years fixed. Well, if you presently don't have either an Amazon or Whole Foods near you, that might be changing. Amazon CEO Andy Jassy has told the Federal Trade Commission he's going to be doubling down on physical stores. Exact numbers weren't exactly given or more specific, specifics given, but Jassy wants to expand Amazon's footprint in their battle with Walmart and Target and going from online to also more physical store locations. Ford Motors, Ford Motors reported this week that they'll be laying off close to 4,000 jobs in Europe because of the shifting to electric vehicle production. Now, 
This comes along with other companies, especially tech companies, as Meta, Facebook. They're laying off 11,000, and Google is firing 12,000 people. Amazon is laying off 18,000. Even Microsoft laying off another 10,000, and others are cutting positions as well. Well, with the new data for January by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, where are the jobs? Well, for January, we picked up 128,000 jobs in the leisure and hospitality sector. Healthcare came in second with 58,000 jobs. And according to the National Restaurant Association, one area in desperate need of workers is restaurants. According to the NRA, they're seeing an increased demand for workers in that field around the country. Well, let's find out how close the NRA is stating a need and with the new inflation numbers and food costs, because with us tonight is Alfred Lanassa. He's the vice president of restaurant operations at William B. Riley and manager of Louisiana Cafe in New Orleans. Hi, Alfred. Welcome to Wall Street Wrap Up. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Alfred, this week, the consumer price index, the CPI numbers came out and with inflation from year over year and, and for this last month. And since last year of January, inflation is up 6.4%, and a lot of it has to do with food. How has the inflation of food affected your business? Well, uh, great question. Uh, we are newly opened. We've been open about five months. So um, we're just embarking on uh, getting our P's and Q's lined up and having, uh, uh, you know, dialing in our food costs. Um, it has affected us when we did open, uh, butter, eggs, cream, all the things that go into baking, uh, pastries and also coffee, uh, were very, very low. And then there was a drastic increase. So we've seen the increase. It has affected us, but what we've tried to do is minimize waste. Um, you know, instead of baking off a two dozen three dozen items, we're baking off a dozen. If we sell out, we sell out, and that eliminates us from overproducing and creating more waste. But uh, it has affected us. At William B. Riley, you're known as a, a food wholesaler. In fact, from what I understand, you've been open since like 1902. Uh, is this a new brand Correct. of new operations of going into the, going direct, you know, normally I would assume you, you'd always dealt with grocery stores. Now you're dealing directly with, with the consumer? That's correct. Uh, this idea was hatched uh, by the um, uh, fourth generation CEO. Um, what he wanted to do, he wanted to have a place that he could showcase all of his products and somehow intertwine them on the menu. So almost every line item that we have on the menu has one of our products, whether it be Swan's Down Flour, um, as you can see behind me, Louisiana tea, French market coffee. Obviously, we're blue plate mayonnaise. So if you get a po' boy, there'll be blue plate mayonnaise on it. Uh, we have our dressings uh, that we use for uh, blue plate is the base of a lot of our dressings. So that was the idea behind it. And we're in a great location. It's a historical building. Um, uh, yes, the Riley family and the company has been here since 1902. And um, it's been great thus far you're owned by William B. Riley, that you won't have problems with supply chain issues such as mayonnaise or um, coffee and such with that. Are you having experiencing any other different problems with supply chain issues of other items that you may put in for that you need in, in uh, dealing with the consumer? Not with the company. It's a great question because um, I was a nervous wreck when building out the restaurant because some of the equipment was uh, delayed. Um, I had a piece of equipment that was delayed eight weeks. Um, and so that was uh, nerve wracking to say the least. Um, but when it comes down to our purveyor, um, I would have to say 95 to 98% of our orders are correct. If we have something, it's either back ordered or it's in shipment. Um, but um, it has not been a worst case scenario for me thus far, uh, which you know I'm very, very happy about. Uh, especially with all the news that we saw last year, last summer, um, with the pictures in California, with the docks and, and all the uh, containers uh, just sitting there. Now, I was just wondering, have you noticed a, a, an uptrend? By, by that, I mean, like, as the months progress away from the COVID lockdowns, it's getting better or it's getting status state? It's getting better. It, it's getting better. 
There are some surcharges on fuel. Um, that's to be expected. Um, we all know we put gas in our cars. They put gas in the trucks. Uh, gas is, is dropped a little bit. But, but we've seen the surcharge, um, and that's really about it. And I guess that's to be expected. When you, when you deal with a, a food items, and I'm thinking of anything from whether you're talking about scrambled eggs for your breakfast, dinner, your breakfast, or even maybe for, even for your lunch, or uh, blue plate mayonnaise. I mean, eggs are an important part of that. It surprised me with this week that the consumer price index, that, I mean, we had increases year over year of items of, you know, 7%, 11%, 4%. But when it came to eggs, it was over 70%, 70. Have you noticed that in your business as well? Uh, we have. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it's been tough. Now, I can't talk to the mayonnaise side because um, that's not part of my, uh, my realm. Um, my four walls is running a restaurant, which is breakfast and a whole lot of eggs and a lot of pastries and a lot of desserts, which encompass a lot of eggs. But when we opened up in October, yes, we, we were paying uh, 28 cents an egg. And I, 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 I don't I don't really want to tell you how much we're paying right now, but thank God we're buying them in volume uh, and we're not the consumer buying a dozen um, or 18 eggs at the grocery store. But yes, that's increased. Butter has increased. Uh, milk, more than anything, half and half and heavy cream has, we've seen a drastic increase in, in those two items. You know, that's interesting. It's hard. The, the side items that we don't think about, I mean, we pay for eggs, we pay for bacon and, and such and such, but the condiments that, you know, you use for your coffees and such, like half and half or whole milk or some people such as that, you have also seen a, a drastic increase in those areas as well? We have, we have. And, um, you know, if somebody orders a coffee drink, you can't short them on milk because, especially if it's an espresso drink, you're not filling the cup all the way, and that's that that's not right. Um, but um, you know, we we do have half and half uh, and and whole milk uh, out front. We've got alternative milks; um, those have increased uh, as well. And so um, it, it's it's been it's been tough. It's been not hard to monitor, but. Um, when you're in this business and breakfast, it's it's uh, it's noticeable, and um, you know, like like I said, chef's trying to do the best that he can to uh, minimize waste and not overproduce. Yeah. What about your client, your customers, Alfred? Um, you know, sometimes I mean, you're on the front lines. You 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 know, you talk to the cl the customer, and you also make the orders and such. Do most customers understand the problems that the restaurateur? or the wholesaler is having so that they can understand when price increases are going up as they are? A, a lot of people ask, um, uh, a compliment to us right now is that um, we have a very affordable menu. Um, and our price point is, is in a great niche for people to come in and get a, a hearty breakfast. Um, and uh, it's economical, both for the local and the tourists. So, we haven't had a need thus far to um, look at a price increase, but most people ask, but most people are asking me about employ employees and whether or not I'm at a hiring shortage and things like that. So I don't know if that answers your question. No, in fact, not only does it answer the question, but it, it makes a new one that I'm thinking of is that uh, these days you can, I always say you can't hardly swing a dead cat without seeing a help wanted sign outside. How are you with finding, uh, finding employees? Um, you know, like everybody else, um, in the, uh, advertisement, it's a needle in a, hay, a haystack. Um, you're always looking to, uh, get good people that can represent, uh, the brand, represent, uh, management and, um, do a good job and provide customer service. So, um, I have a good staff. Uh, we have a small staff. Um, and, uh, so I'm, I'm blessed with those people who are coming into work. But when I needed someone and when we were hiring, it, it was very, very difficult. It was time consuming. There was a lot of phone calls, a lot of no shows. And, and I think that's been par for the course, especially when I talk to uh, a lot of my colleagues and other restaurateurs um, in and around the area. And I, I do see it. I can look out my window and see, uh, you know, now hiring sign. So it's been, it's been tough. 
I hope it gets better for everybody in the service industry uh, here in New Orleans, especially with the fact that we're looking at, you know, Mardi Gras and four festivals coming up. So the city is going to be full to the to the brim through uh, June, July. So I, I people got to go back to work. Yeah. Are you finding that you're going to ha you're having to pay higher wages to get the kind of talent you need? But then, of course, that also when you're as as management, you're you're trying to figure out what the bottom line is of what you charge per plate. That this has this creates a problem of how much you have to pay for employees for labor to be able to what you can charge for your for your food. So we made a conscious decision um, to offer a higher wage. Um, we looked at what was in the area and we decided, okay, we want to get really, really good people who provide customer service and represent the brand. And um, so we, we made a choice to pay a little bit extra. Um, and um, it, thus far, it has worked out. I've had low turnover and I'm very excited about that. I'm five months in um, and I, I hope to keep the staff that we have. Um, I know Chef does too. We've, we've got some team players. And we're excited about that. But yes, to answer your question, um, we did we did increase our hourly wage to um, to to try to find really really good talent. Alfred, it, in the news just this past week. Um, now, in your type of business, it's a little bit different because you're not your waiters and waitresses are not don't don't accept tips. You pay at the at the front. But the IRS has stated how they're wanting the employer the, they're putting the burden on the employer to collect. Uh, to collect the information on tips of the waiters and waitresses rather than waiters reporting it on their own. And again, I know in your particular case, that doesn't really concern you because of the fact that you don't tip the, the waiters the way you're, you're structured. But you've been in the food industry quite some time. Uh, what do you think of the, what do you think that's going through the minds of other employers and, and also waiters and waitresses that are, are now having to do th something new? Uh, um, it's so it, we're counter service. So I'm lucky that, um, um, that's not going to be an issue for us, or at least I hope not. Um, but, uh, I have, I don't, I, you know, honestly, I can't really talk too much about it or to it because I don't, I'm not well versed in it, but I do know that, um, it has come around, uh, every so often. And I don't know if it's a change in the guard at the presidency or with the IRS um, that this is mentioned again and again. Now, if you're in full service and full uh, and and, um, and you have servers, I think it would be more concern for them, uh, and because that's that's a high part of their that's a high percentage of their their paycheck. In my instance, um, it, you know, it's counter service. You choose to tip or not. So I, I wish I could answer that. I think I'm an anomaly because I'm, a, I'm away from the server and the bartender and the tip out and, and bus boys and food runners and things like that. But um, I hope it doesn't happen because I have some happy employees right now and I, <laughs> I, I doubt sure they want Uncle the Sam. <laughs> I, I, I don't think they want Uncle Sam reaching into their pocket. Not at all. Alfred, what about coffee? I know at William B. Riley, they, I mean, Louisiana coffee and tea, uh, you know, uh, French market coffee uh, and such. But you also serve coffee. And one of the, we, we talked about eggs on how eggs have gone up so much. But one of the other things is coffees. Um, and speaking as a consumer, uh, I'm assuming I think all coffee originally, the beans start fr from Brazil. Do you know, as, um, has it been agricultural problems? Um, is it been supply chain issues? Have you had any experiences of, of having coffee problems that would create the cost going higher than it than it was, say, a year, two years, three years ago? Uh, um, I can't answer that okay. because um, I am I am lucky enough to be on the receiving end of great coffee. At beans. William B. Wright. <laughs> <laughs> At William B. Wright. Right. Right. Our coffee. Our coffee is roasted in New Orleans East. And uh, once it is cooled off, they package it for me, 
and they send me uh, a box, a 20 pound box of, of uh, dark, <laughs> medium and decaf. And so I, I'm lucky. I, I, I'm not well versed in what um, those guys are doing out at the plant and um, buying green beans and and what has an effect. But, um, I, I, you know, I wish I could answer that. You'd have to you probably have to get somebody <laughs> from the company uh, uh, to come on your show at another time. And they, they, they're they more uh, well-versed than I am on that subject. Well, they're very welcome, but I'll tell you what, I had a great time. Alfred, I've always enjoyed your food, and uh, I hope you come back. Appreciate Thanks, you. Sir. I appreciate you having me on the show. I really do. Thank you. Thank you, Alfred. Well, this week, the New York Federal Reserve reported that household debt surged by $394 billion in the last three months of 2022. Now, that's the second largest increase in two decades. With the Federal Reserve raising interest rates and with the new CPI numbers coming in hotter than expected, it's almost a certainty that the Fed will be continuing to raise interest rates into the foreseeable future of 2023 and probably into 2024. But by them raising rates, how does that affect you and I, the consumer? Well, as you can see from the, the chart from just one year ago, for a 30-year loan, you're paying almost 30% more for a home. And if you take out a home equity line of credit, also known as a HELOC, well, that interest rate is just over seven and three quarter percent. Credit cards are the biggest increase with outstanding balances on your card to just under 20% per annum. And as a reminder, your 30-year mortgage, that's set at a fixed rate. But with credit cards, well, they can fluctuate and probably to the upside going even higher. In the last quarter of 2022, household debt has soared to now just under $17 trillion. And as mentioned earlier, credit card debt, as of the fourth quarter, they've broken records to now at $986 billion. And breaking these numbers down, mortgage debt has increased over $250 billion. Credit card debt has increased in the last three months of last year to $61 billion, which is way that, that number, that credit card debt is the largest increase since the history of the survey going back to 1999. And according to a report, credit card borrowers are missing their payments and, trans and transitioning to 90-day-plus delinquencies at a rate higher than they had before the pandemic. So just to recap, inflation for January came hotter than expected. Retail sales are above 3% for last month. That's good for consumers are taking on more debt, especially in credit cards. Well, Tesla is now recalling over 362,000 U.S. vehicles due to full self-driving software problems. Now, there are no injuries or accidents that have occurred due to this computer flaw, but if you own a Tesla between 2016 and 2023, there may be a problem. With Tesla, you won't have to bring it in because this can be solved in what's called an all-over-the-air correction. The FSB stands for Full Self-Driving Software. And Tesla has issued a statement that they disagree with the NTSB, the National Transportation Safety Board, but they have agreed to the recall. And understand, when, when we hear of recall, there's a thought of physically bringing in your automobile. With this correction, it's done via computer. Tesla's Investor Day is going to be on March the 1st. No doubt they'll be hearing a lot more about this computer flaw. Well, if you've got a question or a comment about the show, we'd love to hear from you. Make it pithy, make it concise, and write us at Andre at WallStreetWrapUp.info. So let's take a look at the markets heading into next week. But first, what information technology company went public on this day in 1990 that has since increased more than 30,000%? Well, we've got the answer in just a moment. Well, what information and technology company went public on this day in 1990 that their stock has now increased more than 30,000 percent? Cisco Systems. Well, two weeks ago, when we were together, I showed you a chart of a possible good times coming in the market for the rest of this year. Well, I had so many emails asking me to repeat it. I wanted to do so. Now, when the market goes up in January after a negative year, as we had, it tends to be a very good news. 
But only five times in history, in 1954, 1961, 67, 1975, and just a couple of years ago, in 2019, the market fell the year before and popped more than 5% in January. Look at these numbers. Now, for the full year, the returns were spectacular. So there's a lot of numbers here, but January ended higher. Now, this has only happened five times, and in 1954, the full-year returns were at 45%. And the lowest was in 1967, when the S&P 500, that ended the year at just, just over 20%. Now, here are some closing prices of some commodities for this week. Gas prices again are on the rise. President Biden announced this week that he will be releasing 26 million more barrels of oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. The national average today hit $3.42 per gallon, and our Strategic Petroleum Reserves in 2020 was at 650 million barrels of oil in reserves. Well, today, those same reserves now sit at just 372 million barrels remaining in the stockpile. Now, if we continue on the pace, that reserves will be depleted in about three months. And finally, here's something that may bring a smile to your face. According to Ryan Dietrich with Carson Group, when the S&P 500 is up 7.5% from January the 1st to Valentine's Day, the remainder of the year has been up 9 out of 10 times. Yes, beginning of the year to Valentine's Day, this ESP has been up 7.7% for this year. So, well, I'll tell you on December 31st if we've been correct. So join us next week when my guest will be the associate editor of the Wall Street Journal, John Busey. John, before being associate editor of the journal, was Washington bureau chief, and he was also in Hong Kong as the journal's Asian editor. From the economy to Chinese spy balloons, We've got lots to discuss. That's next week, Wall Street Journal, John Bussey. And finally, I'd like to take a moment and say thank you to a number of people here at WYES. I wasn't here last week because, well, I was in the hospital. Nothing serious, but something as small as a stomach ulcer was enough to have me on my back and not in the studio and being in the hospital. So I want to take a moment to thank very much all the people here and to Marcia Cavanaugh for filling in for me at the last minute. Also, George Matulik for production and all the staff here at WYES for their last minute work on last week's show. Thank you. And that's our show for this Friday, February the 17th. Hope you enjoyed it. Remember, we repeat the show Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. Central Time. But the best way, set your DVR so you'll never miss an episode. My thanks so much to Alfred Lanassa for joining us this evening. But as always, it is you. We appreciate you for allowing us into your home this evening. The stock market's going to be closed for Monday on President's Day, but it's going to be open for business on Tuesday, Mardi Gras, Fat Tuesday. Have a fun weekend with the ones you love and a productive week as well. I'll be here next week. Remember, if it's Friday, it's Wall Street Wrap-Up. I'm Andre Laborde. And remember, money never slips. Good night. Italian Pie is proud to support WYES and this episode of Wall Street Wrap-Up and to promote the importance of financial literacy and education.